greatest fascination for kings, queens, emperors, and maharajas, a symbol of power and a gift of love. Part of the mystique of the pearl centered on the mystery of its origin. But so powerful is their allure that for thousands of years people risked their lives to wrest this perfect jewel from the ocean's depth. Only a few kilometers along the UAE's coastline, in the warm waters of the Arabian Gulf, oysters start their lives after drifting along an ocean currents as larvae until they find a suitable place to settle. Oysters are a member of the mollusk family. They are sensitive creatures, highly susceptible to subtle changes in the environment. This is Pinctada radiata, the Gulf's most common pearl-bearing oyster. Pinctadas prefer settling where algae is present in abundance, as they feed by filtering minute algae cells and other nutrients from the water. The Arabian Gulf's naturally high content of suspended sediments and sometimes fast-moving currents have largely been responsible for Pinctada's historical reputation as producer of the world's finest natural pearls. Whilst feeding, they also ingest foreign material and sometimes a tiny grain of sand, coral or shell gets caught on its delicate inner flesh, becoming an irritant. The foreign particle is then isolated inside a membrane or pearl sac that secretes nacre, the same smooth substance known more commonly as mother of pearl that lines its shell. It slowly plates the irritant with translucent layers of nacre until it becomes smooth and tolerable, a process that can take many months and even years. With each passing year, the pearl grows larger inside the host oyster as it is repeatedly plated layer upon layer. Each oyster produces pearls that take on the same color of its host's shell or mantle. Hues range from pink, gold and silver white through to darker shades of gray, green and black. Exactly what pearl divers search for throughout centuries of diving in these waters. During the heyday of the pearl trade, at the turn of the last century, huge fleets of pearling vessels set out each year from June to September. Right up until the 1930s, Dubai alone had a fleet of 335 pearling dhows, out of a total Gulf-wide fleet of about 2,000 vessels. In all, some 80,000 men were earning their living from the pearling business, of which 22,000 were from the Trucial States. During the preparation for the voyage, the ships were rubbed with oils and fats for protection from salt, loaded with water, food, ropes and other necessities. This was a community affair, and everyone turned up to help with the preparations. The Nokada, the Dao's captain, would announce the beginning of the journey. Men who wished to die would step forward they were then given advances on their earnings in order to buy food for the families they would be leaving behind. This is the 
يقوضهم قواض قواض يعطيهم 300 ويعطيهم عيش حق البيت يونية عيش يحسبها عليهم هو اليونية تقريبا حوالي ب 5 ريال او ب 10 ريال يعني حسب ربيات ربيات هندية يعني Divers often simply dived in order to pay off the debts they incurred whilst providing their loved ones with all they needed whilst the dials were away at sea for up to four months. Upon the day of departure, all the families of the village would come out to bid the divers farewell. An exciting and enthralling sight. The sound of sailors and divers singing accompanied by the throbbing of their drums was borne across the water for leagues around. أربعة أشهر حوالي في البحمل حوالي 120 نفر في 100 نفر يعني على حسب الغارب فحد يسوب السوا السيف فوق الغيص تحت الغاصة يغصون والسيوب يسوبون وحد منهم قسم يفلج يفلج محار الغاصة يغصون حد فصلة حد فصلتين حد ثلاث فيعني هذا على طول الأربعة شهور هالنمونة يعني ساعات يقصون غيص غيص يعني توقف من الصبح إلى المغرب يصير واقف والغيص في البحر أي قصرون بيقصرون بيغيرون مكان من منطقة إلى منطقة بيقصرون وبيرون يعني هذه حياتهم ثانيا المعاملة كان مخوة في محمد واحد كل واحد يعني أمي وعجرين ما تقول واحد السيب يسوب والغيص يقص واللي يفلج يفلج وهذا ترى ما في ما عندهم شيء اختلافات يعني وامرهم عند واحد وامرهم عند واحد عند النوخذ اي الامر عند النوخذ Divers worked in tandem with saves who were responsible for heaving up the baskets of oysters as well as the divers themselves During his time underwater a diver could pick up about a dozen shells staying submerged right to the limit of his breath holding capacity he would remove the rope from around his neck, give two hard tugs on the line, and wait for the sabe to yank him up as fast as possible to the surface. With so many people crammed onto one boat for so many weeks at a time, it was easy to see why the divers constituted such a tightly knit community. <laughs> وحد السيوب هناك ترى لين اذان الفجر اذان الفجر نشوا حشوا المحار شيء جابوه هنا على الفن وشيء خلوه في البندول يسمونه اصبحوا من اجل ساعه صلوا الفجر يلسوا يفلجوا شيء منه هذاك حد يفلج هني فيهم يعني هذا يفلجون خلاص لاليس يا لاليس يسمونه هذا لا يفلجون هاي اربع شهور هاي حالتهم اربع شهور وعشر ايام Despite the many hardships, the rewards were often lucrative. The UAE rapidly became a major pearl trading center, with its early economy thriving on trade of all sorts with other Gulf communities, India, Persia, Asia, and East Africa. At the turn of the last century, the pearl business was valued at over $7 million, accounting for up to 95% of the national income. The UAE's initial wealth depended on the results of the pearling season. If it had been a successful season, money from the diving crews, boat owners and pearl merchants circulated in the souk, the ensuing benefits being felt by the entire community. The region prospered, with pearling always at the center of its affairs, right up until the dawn of the oil era. The demise of pearling in the Arabian Gulf was due principally to the development of cultured pearls in Japan, flooding the markets with so-called artificial pearls. Prices dropped in world markets and London buyers quickly favored the convenience of cultured pearls. As oil began to create dramatic changes in regional economies, pearling eventually became a symbol of a bygone era. The collection you're about to see is unique in that it is one of the most precious collections of natural pearls anywhere in the world. It also reflects a singular act of generosity from Mr. Sultan Alois, who has left this personal collection in the care of the National Bank of Dubai as a record for posterity to the people of the United Arab Emirates and the whole world. Gathering pearls from the sea 
was something more than just a way of making money. Not just an industry like getting oil from beneath the desert. Pearling signified more than that. It was a tradition, a way that Sultan, his father and countless others had lived for many centuries. It was based not on the get-rich-quick world of 20th century oil, but on a day-in, day-out working relationship between the coastal settlements and the waters fringing the desert, between the diver and the sea. Pearl diving is now a distant memory that is fading as quickly as are the surviving divers still alive today. ينتهي الغوص الله الحمد لله رب العالمين يقول الله إذا شديت باب العبدي فتحت له باب سد باب الغوص فتح لنا باب البترول الكويت السعودية البحرين قطر الأمارات أمان الإيران كلهم هاي يغوصون بدأ اليوم بند باب الغوص ربي فتح لهم البترول قال فتح باب الخزائن الأرض اللي وعدها الله زين بعد